A 51-year-old man presents with a non-healing left foot wound and evidence of severe peripheral arterial disease on non-invasive testing. He was originally taken for a left lower extremity arteriogram, which demonstrated a popliteal stenosis as well as a TP trunk occlusion. Despite multiple attempts, we were unable to cross the TP trunk occlusion via an endovascular antigrade approach. Therefore, we recommended a femdistal bypass. However, the patient was evaluated by cardiology and was deemed to be too high risk for general anesthesia because of his cardiac history. He was instead taken to the operating room for an endovascular retrograde approach to the posterior tibial artery. The patient is brought to the operating room and placed supine on the table. The entire left leg and bilateral groins are prepped and draped. The left posterior tibial artery was examined using ultrasound. The skin overlying the posterior tibial artery was infiltrated with local anesthesia. The hockey stick ultrasound probe is used to give us the maximum resolution. We identify the skin overlying the posterior tibial artery and access to the posterior tibial artery is performed using the micropuncture needle in a retrograde fashion under ultrasound guidance. Once accessed with a needle, a wire is passed proximally into the posterior tibial artery. Fluoroscopy here confirms our wire within the posterior tibial artery. A small skin nick is made at the puncture site to facilitate entry of our micropuncture sheath. The pedal axis micropuncture sheath is advanced over the wire and into the posterior tibial artery. The inner dilator is removed. The pedal axis micropuncture sheath cap is secured to the sheath. Arteriogram is performed through this micropuncture sheath as shown here. Arteriogram at the level of the leg reveals a robust posterior tibial artery, a patent peroneal artery, but occlusion of the TP trunk as well as a stenotic slow filling anterior tibial artery. Simultaneously, we had access to the right common femoral artery and a sheath had been brought up and over to the level of the left SFA. More proximal arteriogram from this sheath reveals a stenosis or dissection at the popliteal artery behind the knee. We use our retrograde wire from the posterior tibial artery and a crossing catheter to easily traverse the TP trunk occlusion and popliteal stenosis. Once the stenosis had been crossed, we brought up a snare from the right common femoral artery up and over the aortic bifurcation and to the left SFA and used that snare to grab our wire coming from the posterior tibial artery. The wire is pulled through in a body floss configuration, giving us the maximum support to pass our balloons and stents that will be used to treat the lesion. As can be seen here, prior to treatment, there is minimal bleeding coming from our puncture site at the posterior tibial artery. A 4 mm balloon is brought over from the common femoral artery access and used to angioplasty the TP trunk occlusion. The popliteal artery is treated with a 5 mm balloon. Repeat left lower extremity arteriogram reveals persistent stenosis at the popliteal artery behind the knee. Therefore, a 5 mm uncovered stent is brought up and over the aortic bifurcation and deployed within the popliteal artery behind the knee. The stent is ballooned post-deployment with a 5 mm balloon. Repeat left lower extremity arteriogram reveals resolution of the popliteal stenosis with a patent TP trunk and brisk low down to the foot. The dominant posterior tibial artery fills the plantar arch and supplies the majority of the foot. The previously seen slow ooze coming from the posterior tibial artery puncture site has now become robust pulsatile flow. 